The divergence reached its peak in 1969. Chenbao Island is not even one square kilometer, and yet the tiny island was a place of interest in the 1970s. After the armed border clashes with the Soviet Union, the Chinese government began to reappraise China's foreign policy. In this aspect, the marshals suggested that China break the stalemate and seek a reproachment with the United States. This would give China more room to maneuver in its relations with other countries. On October the 1st, 1970, an American reporter appeared next to Chairman Mao Zedong on the Tiananmen rostrum as the People's Republic turned 21. The journalist was Edgar Snow. After the ceremony, I asked Chairman Mao. I said, Mr. Snow is an old friend, but after all, he's only an American journalist. Why did you give him such an honor to stand next to you at the ceremony? Chairman Mao smiled and told me that his object was not Snow himself. He said he was testing U.S. nerves. But the message went right past the White House. In the documentary film Henry Kissinger, White House Years, Dr. Kissinger explained. This was unprecedented. No American had ever been so honored. Unfortunately, Mao Zedong and Zhou Enlai overestimated our subtlety, for what they conveyed was so oblique that our crude, occidental minds completely missed the point. Will Mao use a rapier? Nixon seized a sledgehammer hammer to convey a signal of his own. On November the 10th, 1970, Pakistani President Yahya Khan visited China. He brought an important message to the Chinese leaders. The U.S. wanted to conduct high-level talks in Beijing. One month after Yahya Khan's visit, Chairman Mao Zedong told Snow that he welcomed Mr. Nixon to visit China, either as a tourist or president. The next year, Henry Kissinger secretly flew across the Pakistani border to China. So Nixon and I agreed that if the trip was successful, I would send him a message in the open with just one word. And if it failed, I'd send him a message with another word. Kissinger arrived in China on July the 9th, 1971. He spent 17 of the next 48 hours in meetings with Premier Zhou Enlai. And on the 11th, President Nixon received a one-word message from Dr. Kissinger, Eureka. Eureka is a Greek word meaning, I have found it, I have been successful. On February 21st, 1972, the 37th President of the United States, Richard Nixon, arrived in Beijing. Upon meeting Zhou Enlai, Nixon told him this handshake had crossed a great ocean and 20 years of hostility. It was not until January 1979 that the two sides established diplomatic relations. And three weeks later, the U.S. invited Deng Xiaoping to Washington. While China's relation with the West thaws, the country also opened its door to the world. In 1978, China adopted the reform and opening up policy. The policy coincided with a stride of economic development of China, as well as a dramatic change and adjustment of international system in the 1980s. 
1985, Deng Xiaoping perceived that change in world politics and drew a major conclusion that peace and development were the two important issues of the contemporary world. 20th世纪, there were two world wars in the 20th century. Two main themes dominated world politics, war and revolution. But in the 1980s, Deng Xiaoping perceived the changes in the contemporary world and proposed peace and development as the two important issues. The achievements China has made over the years proves that his perceptions were correct, and this is the greatness of Deng's leadership. At the same time, China's relations with the Soviet Union began to pick up. In 1986, Mike Wallace from the U.S. television network CBS got a one-on-one -on -one interview with Deng Xiaoping. Welcome. <laughs> Would you like to meet him? Would you like... He says he will talk at any time, at any level, about anything. Would you be prepared to meet uh, Gorbachev at the summit? On May the 15th, 1989, Gorbachev arrived in Beijing. He was the first top leader from the Soviet Union in 30 years to set foot on Chinese soil. The next day, he met with Deng Xiaoping in the Great Hall of the People. But unlike previous meetings between Chinese and Soviet leaders, the two greeted each other with handshakes instead of hugs. The handshake signaled China and the Soviet Union were no longer opponents as in the 1970s, nor were they close allies as in the 1950s. The two sides agreed to do away with the past and formed an equal and normal bilateral relationship. Starting from the 1980s, China has committed itself to a non-aligned foreign policy. At the same time, through the policy of reform and opening up, China has achieved eye-catching development and gradually risen to become a global power. In April 1971, the U.S. table tennis team visited China. This opened the door to Sino-U.S. exchanges after 22 years. The move was hailed as ping-pong diplomacy. In October 1971, the UN General Assembly restored all legitimate rights to the People's Republic of China in the world body. On September the 25th, 1972, Japanese Prime Minister Kakue Tanaka visited China. Four days later, the two governments restored diplomatic relations. On January the 1st, 1979, China and the United States established diplomatic relations. This changed the global geopolitical landscape in the Cold War era. In December 1984, China and Britain signed the Joint Declaration on the Question of Hong Kong. It meant 150 years of British colonial rule would end in 1997. In December 1992, Russian President Boris Yeltsin visited China, achieving the smooth transition of relations after the disintegration of the Soviet Union. Four years later, relations developed into a strategic partnership. In May 1999, in the Kosovo War, US-led NATO forces bombed the Chinese embassy in Yugoslavia, killing three Chinese nationals. Sino-U.S. relations were badly damaged. At the end of the 1980s, the international political situation had become so unstable that various powers began to compete for influence. In the autumn of 1989, the Berlin Wall was finally pulled down, allowing all Berlin citizens to freely gather at the Brandenburg Gate. Changes swept through Eastern Europe. By the end of 1991, the 74-year-old Soviet Union became history. <laughs>